Hi guys, my name's Tim. I'm a programmer on the Overwatch team. And I'm Phil, another programmer on the Overwatch team. Today we're going to talk about netcode. It's been one of your favorite topics on the forums and on Reddit, and we really appreciate the discourse. It's time for us to kind of come out from hiding. We haven't really engaged in this conversation much. And a lot of that was due, at least for me personally, around the fact that I thought netcode is really complicated. There's a lot of trade-offs you have to make. It's a technique that's uh, very well understood by fans of shooters in particular. That fear was kind of dismissed by the fact that you guys have reverse engineered how our netcode works anyway. You've had wonderful conversations on Reddit and on the forums uh, using Wireshark and other techniques, your own observations, to really figure out how our netcode really works. We want to take this opportunity to talk about the techniques that we're using, the values that drove those techniques, and changes that we're making based on your feedback, including solutions that you guys have posited yourselves. So, uh, speaking of values, um, one of our first values is what we call favor the shooter. What favor the shooter means is if you line your crosshair up over a target and fire, you should, under most circumstances, hit that target. Absolutely, except in the case where the target does something to mitigate it. An example of that might be Tracer blinking out of the way or a Reaper using Wraith form. The other value is something we call responsiveness, and responsiveness is key to action games in general, Blizzard games down to a key, and first-person shooters in particular. Responsiveness simply means that when you press a button, you should see the result immediately. If you press W on your keyboard, you should immediately move forward. We're playing a network game, you shouldn't have to wait for the server to acknowledge you know, what you've done, what your inputs actually are. And that applies to most things you do in the game. We want this game to feel nice and tight and responsive. With a caveat, of course, here that in the event that the server disagrees, uh, mainly because you might have died or uh, somebody did some kind of ability like McCree uh, throwing off his uh, flashbang, flashbang yeah. Yeah, in order to mitigate and stun you, your movement would then be wrong and the server would need to correct you. Right. Uh, and those two favor the shooter and its exceptions, as well as uh, responsiveness and their exceptions kind of intertwine. So we'll talk in a bit of detail about the specifics of how we actually solve those problems. We'll kick it off with responsiveness. So um, responsiveness is pretty straightforward. Basically, the client has a pretty good amount of the simulation built in. So when you hit W, we know exactly how you're going to move. We can start you moving forward while we send that input to the server. It's going to take some time for the server to get that input and process it, but an overwhelming majority of the time, the server is going to simulate pretty much the same result that you simulated. Um, it's going to then send that result back up to you, and if you're correct, which again, you are most of the time in your predictions, there won't be any change, you won't notice it. If um, there's a misprediction, for example, you thought you moved forward, but some McCree threw a flashbang and stunned you, the client will receive that authoritative update from the server, and snap you back or, or, or interpolate you really quickly back to the position that the server acknowledged was the right spot where you should have gotten stunned. But these responsive techniques apply to pretty much everything we do in the game. There are a handful of exceptions to it, um, mostly around spawning barriers, spawning an ice wall. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few slow moving attacks like Reinhardt's flame strike and Symmetra's secondary fire, for example. Um, if you'd like to test this at home, try playing with two different pings. Connect to a North American server if you're a North American player. Try firing off Symmetra's secondary fire and see how long it takes before that ball appears. And then connect to a European server and see what the difference is. In that case, we don't predict those, those shots. But, again, the majority of cases we do. So Farah, for example, yeah. we predict those rockets. Yeah, so when you, see, when you hit the fire button on Farah, you'll see a rocket flying out. Now, that rocket's completely predicted. Um, we did that because it felt nice. Um, however, on the other side, we don't necessarily want to have damage occurring um, just because you think it happened. So we delay things like the explosion and the knockback from occurring up until the point where the server acknowledges that that rocket was created, it had flown a certain way, and then had exploded at a particular point. And that responsiveness is really cool with Farah, right? You fire that rocket, it predicts on your client as long as you didn't get stunned or killed, that rocket will simulate pretty much the same way on the server on your behalf. You don't need to lead targets based on your lag. You just lead targets based on the velocity of the projectile. That makes all these projectile weapons feel really tight and responsive. And Overwatch, as you guys know, uses a lot of projectile weapons. You know, the majority of our weapons are not hit scan. Um, the hit scan uh, prediction techniques are much, much easier because there's not this entity in the world that you then have to erase if somehow you mispredicted. Um, let's talk a bit about favor the shooter. Ah. All right, so favor the shooter uh, is really interesting. We have some props here. This explains our table to kind of describe the different factors that go into the simulation when we try to favor your shot. This represents Farah, obviously, because it's a chibi Farah. Uh, 
This is the server's representation of where Farah is. Now imagine you've got, you know, three versions of the world. We're going to start with just one, move out to a second one here in yep. a moment. But ultimately, the server is authoritative over everything in Overwatch. So as a result, this position is really, really, really important. Now imagine that we are okay. playing yeah. Farah. So we have decided to go ahead and move forward. So the way this works out is that our client is predicting out our forward movement. So in our client, uh, we've, we're ahead of where the server is. And this distance here is somewhat representative of also time. So this distance is uh, basically reflecting how long it takes for information to travel from the server to the client, or in this case, vice versa, uh, because we're predicting. Uh, it also is a function of how long it takes for the server to process inputs. It's also a function of how long it takes for your client to handle the inputs. Uh, and then ad in addition to that, there's also a little bit of buffering that occurs in terms of smoothing out the rate uh, or smoothing out the updates that are actually coming into the server. So you can imagine just in general that you want to do yeah, the Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, we can do the pairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so imagine your client is predicting ahead of the server. It's running this way. The server's following suit based on those delays. The client jumps, the server jumps, so on and so forth. Um, that buffering is kind of key, uh, Phil mentioned, on the server because we don't know if you're going to have subtle fluctuations in your frame rate that are going to slow down your ability to send that 62 and a half commands a second. Um, and uh, we don't know if there's some router in between that is streaming the crap out of some amazing Netflix for your neighbor that's slowing those inputs. So the server tries to keep a healthy number of, of commands on queue to make sure that it doesn't miss any of your commands. Right. If the server misses your commands, the best it can do is kind of duplicate some of your actions. It's assuming that you, if you had W pressed, you probably still had W pressed, but that results in this prediction. So again, the server's the authority, so if you missed some commands to the server because of the internet or frame rate hitches, um, the server's going to have to correct you to get you back in line. Absolutely. So the third party, of course, here is whoever the shooter is. And in this case, I think that's going to be you, you. our audience. Yeah, so choose your favorite hero, your McCree, Widowmaker, May, whatever sniper you want. And uh, the server, the, basically the shooter's going to see a, uh, the Farah us, at some point in time in the past from the server's authoritative position. This distance here, this time, basically, wants to have them move together. So we're all mm -hmm. moving to the right. Yeah. Jump on this, and then you jump, and the server jumps, and then this guy jumps. This gap right here is several different factors, just like the gap from the client, to the, the, uh, us, us, the, uh, the target Farah to the server. Uh, the dominant one is the latency, right? If you're playing from uh, the other side of the planet, it's going to increase this distance, how far back the gap is between where the target thinks they are and where the shooter saw that target. The other factor is processing time on the server for how quickly it's going to update. Um, that's a function of the client update rate predominantly, which is currently at 20.8 hertz. So that introduces some latency. Uh, on top of that, you have the, the shooter's processing time. It's their frame rate, how quickly they're rendering what they know the server position to be. And finally, because the server is only updating currently at 20.8 times a second, uh, the shooter can't really draw Farah at that rate. She'll look like a slideshow. She'll look really stuttery, right? Because you'll, you're, you're rendering at 60 plus, mm -hmm. but Farah's, you know, you're getting updated at 20. So we use a technique that's very common in shooters called interpolation delay, where instead of drawing, drawing Farah at the latest data you receive from the server, you instead go like one update back in time and smoothly interpolate chasing towards the next update. Uh, we use a uh, adaptive uh, interpolation delay, which Phil can talk about. Yeah, the R -adap adaptive interpolation delay is designed around the fact that for the vast majority of you out there, you have a very reliable internet connection. So you're getting updates from the server on a regular basis. So um, while a lot of other games will actually do a multiple, so they give themselves like a buffer that's extra spaces, um, that's like two update rates, so it would be the equivalent of like basically 100 milliseconds of delay. Uh, we rely on the fact that you've got a good good connection, you're getting updates on a regular basis, we shrink in the amount of time that we're actually interpolating on the assumption that you're going to continue to have a good connection. And that allows us to not basically uh, have, have as much distance in terms of how far back the person who's shooting at us mm -hmm. is seeing. We mentioned that there's, just like there are exceptions to responsiveness, there are also re uh, exceptions to this favor the shooter value. Um, one of those is, uh, uh, that's already in the game today is something like Reaper's Wraith form. If on the on the uh, on the target client they hit shift and they started their Wraith form, 
um, if the server has acknowledged that, but the shooter hasn't, the shooter will try to shoot Reaper and the server will honor the mitigation. The ser server will not damage Reaper because the server knows that Reaper has already used Wraithform. Um, in that case, the shooter will get a hit registration misprediction. They'll see like the little tiny blood splatter, but they won't see the health bar, they won't see the hit pip. Um, ideally, you know, a couple milliseconds later, they'll see Reaper burst into smoke. So hopefully you guys, you know, Drop the, yeah, the, the, mir the miracle of the human brain will hopefully smooth a lot of that stuff out, but that is how the game works today. We're in the upcoming patch going to add several more mitigation rules to our game. We can kind of sprinkle these wherever we want, and Farah is one of the new ones. So, on Farah, for example, when you actually use her rocket boost and leap, if you on your client have predicted your leap, but the server has not acknowledged it yet, the shooter will still shoot based on this position in the past. Um, so this is again based on your ping. Every if you have a decent ping, or if you anticipate the attack, and the server has received the information about your leap, then, and the shooter has not, the shooter will not register that hit. We'll basically cheat you, we'll mitigate you. We will not favor the shooter in that case because you've done something cool to mitigate that damage. Um, currently, that's in a couple of the invulnerability abilities like Wraithform or Zenyatta's Transcendence. It's also in a, a very small number of high movement abilities like Tracer Blink and Genji Dash. We're gonna add it to several more and we appreciate your feedback on it. Um, you guys haven't commented too much about mispredicting on, tra on Tracer Blinks, so hopefully you won't comment too much about mispredicting on Farah or Winston or Widowmaker's Grapple Hook or a handful of other abilities that we're gonna sprinkle this, this mitigation exception to. Um, let's talk about some other techniques that we're gonna use. So um, we noticed, uh, we, we talked about how from the shooter's perspective, we have an adaptive interpolation delay. It's trying to make sense of the fact that you tend, if you tend to have a nice steady stream of inputs coming from the server, then we can keep you on that razor's edge of the simulation. The server, when it receives input from the client, is buffering as many as four commands. That adds up to like a good 48 milliseconds, and that's no good. So, uh, or 48 milliseconds above where we want the buffer to be. Mm -hmm. um, in reality, we could also have the server consuming the razor's edge of inputs from the client. So in an upcoming patch, we will try to honor your commands and not buffer as many if we know you have a steady stream of inputs coming down. So instead of buffering four, we'll just buffer one. Um, that will basically bring in how far in the future you are from the server, as well as bring in how far uh, in the past the shooter is going to see you because their inputs will also be processed with that, with that delay. Again, based on, on their stream. Mm -hmm. um, Another technique we're gonna use, this is based on feedback from uh, one, of our, one of our pro gamers, Pyro, is uh, using extrapolation. So if you play with someone who has a very, very high ping, they could be shooting you way in the past. And that feels really crummy if you think you've run behind a wall, but they're shooting you from Sri Lanka and you get wrecked. So uh, we're going to put in a cap to how much we're going to rewind you. We had a cap before, but it was kind of soft and it was ridiculously long. We're gonna be a little more aggressive with that and we'll tune it based on your feedback based on the consequences of that cap. So what the cap is gonna do is basically say there is a limit to how far a shooter can rewind a target in the past. But we still want to honor this value of favoring the shooter. So we don't want you to have to lead the target. So your client simulation will try to do the leading for you using a technique called extrapolation, where, the, where your client will understand, oh shoot, my, my delay, which is your ping plus interpolation delay, is higher than this max rewind time, which currently is at, or will be at 250 milliseconds in an upcoming patch. Um, it will extrapolate the difference so that most likely when you shoot at that target, you'll probably register the hit so long as the target dead reckoned in that same direction and kept moving that way. It is extrapolation, it is a guess, it's almost like prediction, it can be wrong. Right. So there are, there are cases where you will mispredict that shot. Um, for high rate weapons, we'll show the misprediction for low rate high damage weapons like Hanzo's arrow or Widowmaker sniper or even McCree shots, we will delay showing the impact um, until it actually is registered by the server. Uh, go ahead. So I mean, one of the reasons for this, again, is just to mitigate the feeling of being shot around a corner. So the longer that we're doing rewinds, the worse it feels as the player who is getting shot by somebody with that uh, non-extrapolating condition. So as soon as we start putting in the extrapolation, it'll tighten up the window in which people are getting shot around corners and hopefully lead to you guys feeling like the game is a lot more fair. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing we do, again, a lot of these things come down to trade-offs with values, is we, uh, we choose to match you against similar skilled players and similar ping players. Um, and it's a trade-off, right? Because you could be playing against people who have a very low ping, 
like yourself, you'll be shot around in corners less, but um, they're you know a pro Widowmaker and you just get wrecked anyway. You did, don't make it out of the yeah, spawn very yeah. often. Um, so you won't, you'll be shot before you run around the corner, but you'll be shot all the time. So we have to make those trade-offs, right? We have to try to match people with similar skills, try to match people with similar pings. We're, we've, we've been tuning that, and in upcoming patches, we should see some better ping-based matchmaking. And certainly once we get into open beta, the floodgates will open and we'll have way more opportunities to basically factor ping into the equation and reduce this even further. Finally, uh, as a kind of a treat in the upcoming patch or yeah, upcoming patch. Upcoming patch. Yeah. Uh, we will be adding in an option on custom servers uh, for those of you who like to do tournaments and scrims uh, to play at a 60 hertz update rate on your client. Now, what this means is that you will have the ability to check a box on the UI and get into a scrimmage where the times that we're actually spending in terms of you waiting for the server to process or send you data gets shrunk down even more. Yeah. So for those particular games, especially when you're trying to do a competitive tournament, it's really important that you have a very, very responsive uh, gameplay session. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're trying to add an option to support that specifically for these cases. And out of the gate, again, we talked through all the factors, right? Your latency is a factor, processing time, interpolation delay, these are all factors. If you are playing a custom tournament against people across the pond, that 60 hertz update rate is probably not going to help much because it's going to be dominated by by latency. Um, it still help, it'll help a lot, right? It'll shave off about 20 milliseconds on average from the interpolation delay and about 20 milliseconds on average from the processing time. So that, that 40 millisecond zone, assuming everyone has a nice clean, uh, good, solid yeah, good solid connection, should be good. Yeah. Um, thank you guys. Um, I look forward to your feedback on this Netcode discussion. We really appreciate the ideas you shared with us so far. We've integrated a lot of those into the game that you'll see in an upcoming patch. We take this stuff very seriously. Uh, favoring the shooter, responsiveness, server authority, these are all really important values to making Overwatch great, and we appreciate you guys going on this journey with us. Thank you again. Thank you.